check, check. Check, 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 check. Everybody can hear me, okay? Yeah, so, my friends, we've come tonight, we're non-discriminating gospel preachers, and that's why we're using the amp tonight. We like to come out, we like to preach Christ. We like to make sure that every ear at this at the uh, the plaza tonight has an opportunity to hear about Jesus Christ. And unfortunately, even though you might hear the things of Christ, it might go into your ears. Christ himself says that some people, even though they have ears, they don't really hear. So it's one of those things where you might be able to hear what we're saying tonight, but you don't really hear what we're saying tonight, if that makes sense. And so... Obviously, we have lights out tonight. We have a uh, Santa Claus on the end there. There's even a nativity center over here on the corner. And so it's a strange thing tonight, my friends. We can come tonight and we can preach about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We can, we can preach about the one who said before Abraham was, I am the one who created all things. The Bible says the one for whom all things have been made. This is Jesus Christ. And so tonight... You know, the lights on the trees, they, they just don't do justice. You know, the Nativity Center, the Santa Claus exhibit over there, the things on the stage, they just don't do justice to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so we've come out tonight, by God's grace, to do justice to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to show you, to, to teach you, to preach about what Christ has done. And so as you notice, as you notice the sign, now, my friends, the sign obviously says it's Sin Awareness Day. So tonight, Sin Awareness Night, today's Sin Awareness Day. Tomorrow will also be Sin Awareness Day. Yesterday was actually also Sin Awareness Day. And so the reason why it's so important to make you aware of your sin is because first and foremost, it tells us about who God is. And see, we can come out tonight and we can say, today, be aware of your sin. Today, be enlightened about what your sin is. And apart from God, apart from even Christ, you can't really, you can't really know what sin is. And so part of our task tonight will be to explain to you who God is, to preach to you about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God upon whose ground you walk tonight, the, the, the God whose air you're breathing tonight. The God whose food you eat every day when you go to the table. The God who's given you breath and you love. And so this God, my friends, this is the creator of the universe. So because God is the creator of the universe, what we have to realize is that there's an obligation on the creation, on the creature, to worship and to serve and to love the creator. So because God has created you, he has rights over you. Isn't that amazing? He has the right over you. Why? Because he's the creator. And so if that was all we knew about God, that in itself would be enough to obligate us to worship him, to obligate us to love him, this, this God who has created us. And we have that in your Bible. My friends, by the way, if you, if you do have your Bibles tonight, go to, go to Genesis chapter 1. It's the very first book. I mean, it's the first book in the Bible, right? We all, we all know where, I mean, it's very easy to find Genesis. Now, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created. God created. In the beginning, God created. And so the, the, the God of the universe is a creator. And when the Bible talks about the God of the universe, the Bible's not talking about a generic God. It's, you know, the Bible's talking about a very specific God. A triune God, a God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, a tri, a God who is three persons. There's one God, three persons. And so this God has created every single thing in the universe. This God himself, the God of the universe, has no beginning. Christ has no beginning. You know, out here there are Jehovah's Witnesses, so-called Jehovah's Witnesses. You want to watch out for them because they want to say that Christ had a beginning. But the Bible shows that Christ had no beginning. In fact, here you have, in Genesis chapter 1, verse, verse 1, the Christ of the Bible is actually very, very active when it comes to the creation of the universe. The Bible says all things have been made through Christ. And so that's the first thing we have to realize, my friends, is that God is the creator of all things. God's the creator of the earth you walk on, the earth that you stand on, the earth that you're made of. God is the creator of all things. Because God created you, you have an obligation to serve Him, to worship Him, 
But now, sir, I don't know about you. A lot of times people don't want to serve God. They don't love God. In fact, most people, Christ even says the broad road is the one that leads to destruction. There's many people on the broad road. There's very few people who actually love Christ in spirit and in truth, who actually worship God in spirit and in truth. Very few people. Christ himself, the God of the universe, who's never made a mistake, says the way is broad. Most people, many people, are on the broad road. They're on the broad way, which leads to, in Christ's words, destruction. You know, the same Christ who says, don't fear those who kill the body. Don't fear those who can, who can kill you. Don't fear cancer. Don't fear... You know, the, uh, the the terrorists, don't fear the people who, who can harm you. He says, don't fear man. What can man do? All man can do to you is kill you. Fear God, he says. The Christ of the Bible says, fear God. He says, you don't have anything to except God himself. God is the one who we have to fear, my friends. Now we say, what about, what about this Christ? You know, it's Christmas season, the lights are out, they're wrapped around the trees, we have the Nativity Center down here on the corner. What about this Christ, though? You see, this is the Christ, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, this is the Christ through whom all things have been made. And my favorite part is, this is the Christ for whom all things have been made. Everything's been made for Jesus Christ. Every single star in the sky has been made for Jesus Christ. Every blade of grass has been made for Jesus Christ. Every, even the fish. I mean, my friends, you know, the, the children out here, you probably like fish. Even the fish are made for Jesus Christ. The blades of grass, they're made for Jesus Christ. The, the grains of sand, they're made for Jesus Christ. The mountain, made for Jesus Christ. And so, of course, what do we have? By logical extension, my friends, every human being has been made for Jesus Christ. Everything has been made for the glory of God. Amen? Everything is made for the glory of God. And so the question is, well, how, well, how do I glorify this God? Because this is the God who's created us. That's the point. This is the God who owns us, who has the rights over us, because he's the creator. See, we're just the creation. You know, a lot of times, my friends, I don't know about you, but I've actually heard people, they'll say, well, you know, my, my life is a mess, so I'm mad at God. This happened, I'm mad at God. So-and-so did this to me, I'm mad at God. Right? But the problem with that, my friends, so here's the thing. It's not God's fault. It's not God's fault. You know, the reason evil exists is because human beings sin against God. Human beings sin against God, right? And, and so the Bible is saying that all things made for God, including the human being, we have an obligation to live for. Now what the go, Bible sir. also says is that human beings yeah, apart from Christ, they don't want to live for God. In fact, human beings apart from Christ, outside of Jesus Christ, they don't love God. Outside of Jesus Christ, the Bible even says there are none who seek for God. They don't even seek God. They don't love God. They have no thoughts for God. They have no desire for God. All their thoughts, in fact, the Bible says, all their thoughts are there is no God. So they're trying to find out excuses. They're, they're trying to come up with ways to excuse themselves from actually worshiping and serving the one true God. Last year, we were out here. And we were preaching in the corner here, and there was a man who came up to me, and he said, Well, my dad died, so I'm mad at God. You know, my dad died. He was 60. I, you know, this, this guy was probably 25, 30. He said, My dad died. I'm mad at God. I don't want to serve God. Why? Because my dad died. And you might be saying, Well, I don't want to serve God because, you know, my, I don't... I, I got a car wreck, and, and my car is totaled, or, or I didn't get the paycheck that I wanted, so I'm mad at God tonight. But well, my friends... The excuses are endless. If you really go down that path, the excuses are endless. All they indicate is that your heart, my friends, is what the Bible calls a heart of stone. Right, sir? Right, sir? That's what I thought. That's how it is. That's usually how it is. It's sad. Because their heart's a heart of stone. You see that, man? So a lot of times, even though God, the Creator, has created us, and we're obligated to love Him, you say, yeah, but I don't. Right? I mean, if I don't love God... I mean, if I don't love God, how in the world can I serve God? And so that's why Christ says, see, it's out of a, the abundance of a person's heart, their mouth speaks. That's where their, that's where the evil actions come from. It comes from an evil heart. And so the problem is, if, if God requires me to love Him because He's created me, and I don't love Him, what should I do then? See, the Bible says you need a heart of flesh. 
The Bible says that you've been born in Adam, but you need to be born again. You need the new birth. You need the spiritual birth that comes from God, God alone. That comes from the Holy Spirit coming upon a person so that they 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 make that person a new creation. They go from loving the God they once hated, the God they were once indifferent towards or apathetic about, the God they, they didn't really care about, they go from hating that God to loving that God. Imagine that. Serving that God and enjoying that God and worshiping that God. That's the kind of, see, that's the new birth. That's the kind of gift that the, that the Lord alone can give. It comes from outside. See, it comes from outside a person. It comes upon a person from God himself, from God alone. That's what, they, that's what you need. See, that's what every person needs. That's what every person requires. And so we can say, yeah, it's sin. What is it? Be aware of your sin. Why? Well, because the God of the, the, the judge of the earth will always judge correctly. He'll always judge rightly. So you're not going to be able to bribe God. A lot of times, a lot of times people come up with excuses. They try to come up with different religions. They try to come up with different, they try to say, well, even the Roman Catholics, now my friends, now my friends, I don't know about this, I don't know about this area, but there, there might be a few Roman Catholics out here. There might be a few Roman Catholics. And, you know, there's, there's, the problem with this is that even though, if you talk to a Roman Catholic, they don't have any assurance that they're right with God. They have no assurance. You say, can you be certain that if you were to die right now, you would be right with God? No, I, they'll say, no, I, I hope so. But see, what the Bible gives us is a, we know we're right with God. Faith in Christ. We know we're, we're right with God by our faith in Christ. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved, the Bible says. There's therefore now no condemnation for those who love God, for those who have faith in Christ. There's no condemnation. But a Roman Catholic, they don't know whether or not they have assurance. They don't have any assurance, in fact. And the other problem with this is that if you were to ask a Roman Catholic, how can you be right with God, they'll, list, they'll start going through their works. Well, I, I, I went to confession, I went to mass, I did penance, I did that, I did this. Now, who's getting all the glory for that? You are. Instead of saying, I don't deserve heaven, I deserve nothing. And, and yet, the Lord had mercy on me. And you can say, I'm right with God tonight because of what Christ has done. That's what the, that's what the Bible teaches. That's what the true faith is. When you're saying, I should, you know, I'm not right with God tonight because I've done anything. Well, I haven't done anything because I've gone to Mass, because I've, I've, I went to the confession booth, whatever. It's, I'm right with God tonight because of what Christ Jesus has done. Because Christ had mercy on me and he took on flesh. That the God of the universe took on flesh, sir. Wag your head all you want to, but every knee is going to bow to him one night. One day, right? So, and, the, and the thing is, when Christ takes on flesh and he dwells among us, I mean, here you have the, the Christ of the universe for whom all things have been made, the one whom even the angels, even the angels, they worship and they praise this Christ. And in the presence of Christ, they have to cover their faces and cover their feet because Christ is so glorious and Christ is so holy and Christ is he's so majestic, this King of kings, this Lord of lords. And he takes on flesh and the Bible says that, that when he comes among us, and when he grows and he, he's living among those who he grew up with, I mean, he's in this culture. Oh, God. He's in, this, he's in a certain family. He has a certain job. He, he's a carpenter. But the thing about Christ is that they said that he had no majesty. There was nothing, no, no beauty. Nothing to look upon Christ and see some kind of majestic figure when you look at Christ. There was nothing majestic about the way Christ looked. Now, there was something about the way he spoke, but notice, even though there was no one who spoke like Jesus Christ spoke, there were still very few people who actually took up their cross and followed Christ while he was alive. There were pretenders. Maybe you're a pretender tonight. My friends, maybe you're a pretender. Maybe you, you say you love Jesus. You, you might say you're a Christian, but there's no real love in your heart for Christ. There's no real desire to follow Christ. There's no real desire to, to see what Christ has said in His Word, to know who He is in His Word, to find out about, about what He taught. You might say, oh, I love Christ, but there's there's no genuine uh, denial of yourself. There's no, there's no turning away from sin. 
There's no gruesome, like Christ says, mortifying your flesh. There's none of that. So, my friends, you're, you know, there's many pretenders, especially in, in America, of course, right? How many pretenders are there? Are you a pretender, sir, when it comes to Christ? Do you truly love Christ? Do you have assurance that you're right with God tonight? See, in Christ, there's, when, when somebody's been born again, there's no more pretending. When somebody's been truly converted, they realize, you know, it starts by saying, have mercy up, upon me, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinful person. Have mercy on me in awareness of your sin. See, sin awareness day is about being aware of your sin, being aware of the fact that God himself, the judge of the universe, the judge will always judge correctly. This is a, this is a God who you cannot bribe with your the confession booth. You can't bribe God. You can't bribe God with your penance. You can't bribe God with your mass, with your church attendance. You can't bribe this God. The only chance you have is crying out, have mercy on me, Lord, I'm a sinful person. By clinging to Christ in faith. That's the only hope we have, by clinging to Jesus Christ. By looking at this one who took on flesh, who was very aware of sin, not his sin. Christ had no sin. But it was a way of the fact that apart from Christ doing something, apart from God, the triune God doing something about the, the sinful race of humanity, his sheep, that his sheep would not, my friends, his sheep would go to hell. But Christ said he came for his sheep. He lays down his life for his sheep. He came into the world for his sheep. He came into the world for those who had ears to hear. Go sit down. For those who call upon his name. He came to he came to earth to die for his sheep. Because he was aware of the fact that, that he is holy. His nature is holy. His nature is good. His eyes are too pure to look upon evil. His eyes are too pure to look upon sin. You know, the Bible says even liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Even liars go to hell, my friends. You might think lying is just a light thing. My friends, the Bible says that all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Much less the adulterers, the one who look at, at women or men with lust in their hearts, the one who are, you know, drunkards. Even the, the Bible even says even cowards will have their part in the lake of fire. No one spoke more about hell than Jesus Christ. In fact, Christmas is about the wrath of God, my friends. Christmas itself is about the fact that, that God's wrath was coming after his sheep was coming after the people of God. And yet Christ, by Christ's grace, by His mercy, in fact, the Bible even shows that it wasn't because the Father twisted the arm of the Son that He came to earth. Christ was not forced to come to earth. The Father did not make Jesus Christ come to earth. There was a, there was a willing love. It was motivated by love, but there was... There was always harmony and union amongst the triune God. Is that right, man? Do you have any questions tonight? What's your question? See, see, uh, hello, Espanol. So there was always harmony among the triune God. There was, a, there was, there was never any, there was never any confusion. The Father sent the Son. The Son came down to earth, took on flesh. The Son was sent by the Father. He took on flesh. He came to earth. And lo and behold, He lives perfectly. He lives a perfect life. Every square inch of this universe belongs to this Christ. Every, My friends, every square inch, the, the, the ground that you're walking on tonight, it belongs to Christ. The air you breathe belongs to Christ. And even when Christ is on earth, Christ is still upholding the universe. Christ is still upholding the universe. My friends, Christ did not relinquish his deity. Christ did not, be, he didn't unbecome God whenever he came to earth. He was still God. And when he comes to earth, he's clothed in flesh. He's fully man. He's fully God. When he comes to earth, and he's still God. And this Christ, this God-man is still upholding the universe. He's still upholding the stars so that the stars don't come crashing down and kill everybody. What's up, man? Did you get a gospel track? Oh, we got a gospel track right here. There you go. It's the good news of I'll Christ. You guys. But see, the good news, my friends, it only begins because there's such a thing as sin awareness day. 
Without Sin Awareness Day. See, without Sin Awareness Day, unfortunately, you know, a lot of times people say, yeah, but, but, you know, my sins aren't that bad. I'm a pretty good person. Most Roman Catholics think they're pretty good people. Right? Most, most Roman Catholics think they're really good. Why? Because they're right with God based on their works. They say, well, I've done this, I've done that. But the Bible says there's none who does good. No, not one. There's not a single person here who's a good person. You'll never meet a good person. The only good person who's ever lived, my friend, is Jesus Christ. You wag your head, ma'am, all you want to. But here's the, you know, the reality is, is it's God's word. So you can say, well, I disagree. But last time I checked, my friend, see, the, dif the difference between you and God is that God's knowledge is exhaustive. God knows everything. That's the difference between you and God. The second difference is that God never makes a mistake. God always does what's right. He never makes a mistake. He's perfect. The God of the universe is perfect. And this Jesus Christ is the God of the universe. He's perfect. And so when he comes to earth, always doing the will of his Father, every, you know, every second of the, the, the life of Christ, every thought that went through his head, it was always perfect. It was always directed towards the glory of God. Loving his neighbor, loving his friends, loving my friends, my friend Raleigh will tell you. Christ even loving his enemies. I mean, Christ even loved his enemies. And he told us to do the same, but he did it perfectly. And so this Christ, this God man came to earth. When people love sin, they hate Christ. I mean, that makes perfect sense because Christ is the judge of sin. Right? So if you, my friends, if you're a sin lover tonight, here we are, it's Sin Awareness Day. If everybody's sin the side, it's Sin Awareness Day. Sin Awareness Day. It's, sin awareness day. it's, it's almost it's common sense, really. You know, if you love sin, then you hate Christ. Now you might say, no, I love sin, I don't hate Christ, I'm just indifferent about it. My friends, that's hatred. So here's the thing, you cannot serve two masters. So tonight you either love Christ and hate sin, or you love sin and you hate Christ. So which is it? You know, with Christ there was no straddling the fence. He says you're either for him or against him. So you can't be on both sides of the fence. So do you love sin tonight, or do you love Christ tonight? Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. See, out of the mouth of babies, right out of the mouth of the children. So, so there's only two options. You love sin, you love sin, and you hate Christ. Or, or you love Christ and you hate sin. There's only two options. There's only two masters you can serve. There's always only been two. And so, my friends, the question is, whose side are you on tonight? Whose side are you on tonight? What excuses are you coming up with tonight to keep you from from worshiping Christ? What excuses to, to justify yourself tonight? Maybe your excuses you think you're a good person. We've already touched that, that there's no such thing as a good person. But maybe, my friends, just maybe, I mean, maybe you're following a false religion. Maybe you're looking for ways to kind of justify your sin in the eyes of God. Maybe you're, you're trying to make God into something he's not. More of a, more of a grandpa figure, or, or maybe even a puppet. Instead of saying, Lord, have mercy, Christ is the man who, who beats his chest says, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinful human. I'm a sinful man. I'm sinful. And he's beating his chest, and Christ says, that's the man who's justified. The one who recognizes not only that he's a sinner, we all know we're sinners. But we have a conscience that testifies to that. Right, ma'am? You have a conscience. Every human being has a conscience. So we all have a conscience that testifies to the fact that we're guilty in the eyes of God. We're guilty. Even an atheist. Have you ever met an atheist? No. There's no such thing as an atheist. Even so-called atheists actually believe in God. That's why they're atheists. See, they're making up an excuse to try to quiet their conscience. Even atheists know that God exists. If, in fact, my friends, if it wasn't for the fact that God did exist, there wouldn't be any atheists. But because God exists, they look for, just like Adam did, he looks for a tree to hide the eye. So that's what the atheist does. And my friends, that's what the agnostic does. That's what the, uh, the, the non-religious person do. You know, these people, they, they look for excuses to justify their sin. Maybe that's you tonight. So what we're doing tonight, see, we're calling on you to turn to Christ. We're calling a, upon you to, to come out from behind the tree, to get real about sin, to get real about yourself, to get real about God. 
I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. I mean, Christ is mighty enough to say. Right? Christ is mighty enough to save. The Bible says he saved for the uttermost. So Christ saved he came into the world, actually, not for the righteous. Listen, you could probably, I mean, this guy, he looks like a good person. I haven't seen any good people out here tonight. You might be the first one. Is that true? Is it a good person? No kidding. Now, my friend, how many... What, what's your name? Pete. Ben. Now, Ben, you know, I don't know about you, man, but, but last time I checked, now, you probably never told a lie here, right? Never told a lie? Get in there. So, Ben, notice you started out by saying, no, you've never told a lie, but now you're saying, no, maybe I have here and there. Right, so you kind of lied to me about not even telling, you lied about not telling a lie, right? So, so Ben, here's the problem, there's no such thing as a good person who lies, right? You can't be both. And the Bible says that liars will have their part in the lake of fire, they'll go to hell. Liars will. Liars go to hell. They lie. Now let me ask you something, Ben. How many times do you have to lie to make you a liar? Once. So Ben here, self-professed liar tonight, right Ben, you're a liar? So, so, Ben, what are you going to do about it? Well, how are you going to do that? Who are you going to ask? I mean, the, 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 the Muslim God? Yeah, Jesus Christ. You a believer? You follow Christ. That's right, man. See, isn't it? I mean, here it is. I mean, when, when, you, when you truly follow Christ, Ben, have you ever had that moment where you beat your chest and you realize, man, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinful person. That's right. Christ says that's the man who's justified, who recognizes I have no hope tonight except in Jesus Christ. You know, the Roman Catholics, if you ask the Roman Catholics, ben, are you a Roman Catholic, Ben? Now, Ben, come on. Really? I was all bad, Ben. I'm so disappointed. Now, you might ask why you're disappointed, right? Now, I'm not here to beat up on anybody or Roman Catholic or anything else. But, Ben, if I were to, if I were to ask you, Ben, if I were to say, hey, Ben, in order to have my sins forgiven, do I have to be baptized? Well, a Roman Catholic would actually say yes. So, if you're a Roman Catholic, right, you would say yes. Now, if I were to say, Ben, in order to have my sins forgiven, do I have to be part of the Roman Catholic Church? Now, Ben, the Roman Catholics would say yes. They would say, so I thought, you said you're a Roman Catholic, now I'm starting to wonder if you're a Roman Catholic or not. Okay, well, what is our source, man? Where should we look? Look to God's Word, right? Look to God's Word, it's faith alone. You know, there was a time when the Roman Catholics used to kill the Protestants. They'd kill me. And in fact, in the Roman Catholic Catechism, they would say that anyone who says that you're justified by faith alone, you're under the curse of God. You're anathema. And you believe that? So, so, now, Ben, Respectfully, I'd have to say, you don't sound like a Roman Catholic. So, if I was you, you know, just, just friendly advice here, I would flee the Roman Catholic Church, I'd flee that system, I'd find a good Bible preaching church. If you're looking for one, we can help you find one. You know, are you, are you from El Paso? Yeah, if you're looking for a church here, we can help you find one. But I wouldn't flee that system, because that's it's not a biblical system. It's a man-made, it's been built on superstition and tradition. So maybe our conversation tonight, Ben, has been helpful for you. Maybe helpful for other Roman Catholics here who are perhaps even more deceived than them. Right? Do you get a track? Yeah, Ben. So my friend, that's the, that's the man. You might be saying, well, what's going on here? What's about Christ? What's about Christ? What's about Christ? What's about Christ? February, March, April, May, June, July. Um, yeah, August too, August, September, October, November, it's, it's all about Christ. Every single day of the year is about Jesus Christ. Every single second of this universe is about Jesus Christ. It's all about Christ. Christ, everything has been made for Jesus Christ. Everything. So my friends, don't just worship Him one day a year. What a sad thing. In fact, if you do just worship Him one day a year, I promise you, you're not right with God. Because the true faith is going to drive you to worship Him every single day of the year. 
because Christ is worthy to be praised. And you'll worship Him in spirit, you'll worship Him in truth. And my friends, if you have questions tonight, come and talk to us. We have tracks. If you need more information, call upon the name of Christ, turn to Christ, look upon the, the only one who is mighty enough to save tonight, the one who created all things, the, the judge of the universe, the one who's going to judge righteously, the one who's going to cast people into hell but also the one who's actually going to call his sheep to him. His sheep are going to, they have, a lot of sheep have already heard his voice, but even more sheep are going to hear his voice. All his sheep are shepherd. A shepherd's going to call in all his sheep, and for all of eternity, his sheep are going to be praising the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. So every single day of the year is about Christ. Worship him, call upon his name. The Lord have mercy on you, amen.